Science 5. Sexual Reproduction in Plants. Objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the parts and function of a flower, label the parts of a flower, describe the process of self-pollination and cross-pollination. Have you ever wondered how plants reproduce themselves? Correct. Some plants grow new plants from fruits and seeds. But how do you think seeds are formed? Plants form seeds through sexual reproduction, like in animals, but they have a different reproductive body parts compared to animals. Sexual reproduction in plants. Like animals, plants need to reproduce to produce offspring so that the plant population can still exist and live on Earth. Plants have different modes of reproduction. Some plants reproduce sexually, while others reproduce asexually. Similar to animals, sexual reproduction in plants involves female egg and male sperm. It involves flowers and pollens to produce seeds, cones, and fruits. Fertilization or the meeting of male and female gametes need to happen for flowers to produce seeds. Pollination helps facilitate fertilization by helping transfer pollen grains from an anther, in the male part, to a stigma, in the female part. Parts of a flower Many flowers are hermaphrodites. They contain both male, stamen, and female, pistil, parts in the same flower. These flowers are also called perfect flowers. The major parts of a flower include Stamen is the male reproductive flower part that produces pollen grains. It includes the anther, or pollen sac that produces the pollen grains, and filament, to support and make the anther accessible to the agents of pollination. Pollen grains are powdery materials that contain the male gamete. Pistil is the female reproductive flower part, found at the center of a flower. It includes the stigma, style, ovary, and ovules. Stigma is the sticky part at the top of the style, which receives the pollen. Style is the narrow tube between the ovary and the stigma. It helps pollen grains reach the ovary. Ovary is the enlarged base that contains the female eggs called ovules. The accessory flower parts include Petals are the colored parts of the flower that are collectively called corolla. They attract insects for pollination. Sepals are small leaf-like parts at the base of the flower, initially protecting the flower when it is still a bud. A group of sepals is called calyx. Receptacle is the enlarged upper end of the stalk or pedicel where the parts of a flower are attached. Pedicel is the stalk of a flower. From pollination to fertilization. The transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a stamen, male part, to the stigma of a pistil, female, is called pollination. If pollination is successful, fertilization may happen. Fertilization starts when the pollen grains that reach the stigma extend a pollen tube that travels from the stigma and style to the ovary. The male gametes from the pollen travel to the pollen tube to fertilize the ovules. Fertilized ovules become the plant's seeds. Then the ovary of the flower becomes the plant's fruit. If a flower lacks the pistil or stamen, the flower is considered an imperfect flower. Plants with imperfect flowers can also be monoecious or dioecious. Monoecious plants have male and female flowers in the same plant. This means that a plant has flowers with only the pistil, female part, and has flowers with only the stamen, male part. Dioecious plants have separate male and female plants. 
This means that a plant may only have flowers with a pistil, female. Another plant has flowers with a stamen, male. These plants should be planted side by side or near each other so that the pollen from male plants can easily be transferred to the female plants. Plants that reproduce sexually can be flowering plants known as angiosperms or non-flowering plants known as gymnosperms. Angiosperms have enclosed seeds. These are the seeds inside a fruit. Gymnosperms do not produce fruits to protect their seeds. Often, these plants produce cones instead of flowers. Pollination Since plants are almost immovable, agents help in transferring pollen grains. There are two kinds of pollination. Kinds of pollination Self-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. It also occurs between flowers of the same plant. Cross-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of a flower of another flower from a different plant. For example, pollen from stamen sticks to a bee as it visits a flower to collect food. Then the bee travels to another plant of the same type. Pollen on the bee sticks to a pistil of a flower on the other plant. Agents that help in pollination Pollen grains may attach to the legs and other body parts of visiting insects like bees, butterflies, and dragonflies. They carry the pollen grains as they transfer to another flower, wherein the pollen grains from their body may stick to the stigma of another flower. Water, like raindrops that fall on a flower, may carry pollen grains as it slides or drops on the different flower parts, or some pollen grains may fall on the stigma of another flower along with water. Wind also carries pollen grains, it may carry pollen grains as it blows away from which these pollen grains may fall on the stigma of another flower. Human movements also help in pollination. By intentionally or accidentally touching different flowers, pollen grains from the anther can stick to our hands or fingers, and when we move again, the pollen grains may fall off to the stigma of another flower. Practice exercise Rearrange the letters in each item to identify the word being described. 1. Grains that start plant reproduction when they are transferred to the stigma. 2. May carry pollen grains on their legs and body, such as butterflies and bees. 3. Insects 3. Contains both male and female parts. 4. Colored parts that attract insects, also collectively called, corolla. 5. Pollen producing part of a flower. Amen.